My name is Grace Schober, and I am a person in long-term recovery. I've been sober since September 1st of 2014. Um, to get to that point was quite a struggle. I was in and out of um, over a dozen treatment centers. Uh, 14 is actually to be exact. Um, I had a really good family like growing up and um, I just fell off the wagon. Um, I struggled throughout my teen years. I got pregnant very young um, with my oldest son. So for that amount of time, right after he was born, I was an attentive mom, as attentive as you can be at, you know, 17 years old. and. Um, and things were okay shortly after I, I got pregnant again um, and I had my second son. After he was probably about six months old is when things started to fall apart for me. I went through um, a marriage and divorce very young. That relationship, once it ended, is, is where I can like pinpoint where everything started to fall apart. But I started to experiment with drugs um, and then when I started using opiates, I, that's what brought me to my knees almost immediately. Um, I had these two little kids that I knew were depending on me, and when the drugs took over, I no longer, um, I no longer cared at that time. That, that's kind of how the years went on. It was a yo-yo. It was back and forth. It was she's okay, and um, then she's not, and and the. The downward spiral from that point on just got worse and worse. Um, I was homeless. My parents wouldn't allow me back to their house. At one point, my dad had finally, maybe after treatment 10 or so, he had finally put his foot down and said, I'm killing her, you know, she's, she's not going to make it. And I'm aiding in that process. Honestly, I felt comfortable in that life at that time. I felt like this is where I'm at and this is where it's going to end. So when people would say, why, why do you keep doing this? You know, you just got to stop. I never thought that that would be where I was at. And if I could have just stopped, I would have just stopped. And if the love for my family, for my children would have been enough, treatment centers wouldn't exist. You know, there wouldn't be need for aftercare. There wouldn't be a need for any programming. It, you would just love them sober and it's just not the case. You know, I remember in particular a time at my parents' house that my kids were, I had two boys, I have three kids now, I had one in recovery and my two boys that I had, they were very young and I was in the grip so bad that I had to leave and I had to use. There was nothing that could have changed that. They were hanging onto my legs, begging me not to leave, and I left anyway. Um, I, I had to, there was just no choice. And so that's how strong of a grip it has on somebody. Um, and so I found people at, at the last treatment center, center that I went to um, uh, was the retreat here in Lancaster County. And I mean, the people that work there just totally changed my life. The one person is still my sponsor today um, and one of my closest friends. And they just, they sat with somebody who at that time I felt like, why would anybody waste any time on me? Um, and so that was, that was powerful in itself. And, and the hope that they gave me that one day I could, I could be a productive member of society. You know, I could be a functioning, mother, I could be a great mother even, was just something that in my mind didn't even seem like a possibility. Um, but I listened. I listened to these people. Um, I took every suggestion that they gave me, even though I didn't want to. Um, I wasn't happy about it. It wasn't something I wanted to do, but I did not have the support of my parents to continue doing what I was doing. I had the absolute support of my family to continue my recovery, but anything that involved my addiction in any way, I did not have that support. And that is what saved my life. That's 100% what saved my life. Like I said, I took all those suggestions and slowly but surely I was able to regain my kids, um, start building that trust back with my family. Well, my, my family owned sober living homes called the Grace House, and they started those when I was deep in my addiction. 
Um, cause they thought if they couldn't save their daughter, they want to save somebody else's. And so that's how that whole thing started. Little by little, I started to involve myself into that. A couple years go by and I become a house manager. And now, you know, I'm in, me and me and my, uh, friend Colleen, we're, we're in charge of the whole thing. Um, you know, there's nothing that we wouldn't do to help the next person who is struggling with this disease. I know that if I stay sober, there's somebody else out there that I can help to get sober and to become that mom that maybe they lost along the way. Um, and, and the better person, you know, the best version of themselves that they could absolutely be, because I know that I'm not the best version of myself. There's always progress and, and things to work on, but I'm much better than what I used to be.